I have a funny history with Pennywise's Derry Bay Saga. I was a huge fan of it as a kid. Then I went back to enjoy it later on in life and basically scoffed at everything I'd once enjoyed about it as a young lad and left it feeling ultimately confused about how I wanted to recatalog this once childhood favorite back into my subconscious. I feel like I'm biased towards the film, but I can't even figure out in which way I'm biased. So it was with great delight that I anticipated chapter one of the fear-smelling killer clown's return to the big screen, hoping for it to right the wrongs of the original and take its place as the awesome film I thought I had remembered all those years ago. And part one ultimately did that. Everything from the performances to the set pieces, the pacing and the tone, even the fairly run-of-the-mill kingish horror beats it hits all felt satisfying, ranging from above average to great. Unfortunately, Chapter 2 doesn't quite hold that standard, and I left the theater again feeling conflicted about exactly how I felt about the retelling of Maine's favorite sewer dweller. Some movies are easy to judge, right away, and some you kind of need to let marinate, just sitting silently while you work out exactly how you felt about certain aspects of them. This film is definitely the latter, and in the end I emerged from it all with the decision that it was fun, maybe even above average, but nothing I'd put effort into watching again as I did chapter one three times. The biggest problem with the film is it's just more of the same, and that's for everybody, the main characters, the villain, and us, the audience. The kids, now adults, all return to the same place to face the same threat who essentially uses the same tactics against them that ultimately failed the first time. The film tries to rectify this with a plot device that somehow those that leave Derry forget what happened. And that might have been workable, except they just kind of quickly remember again and boom, are right back into it. I can remember the precise moment I realized the filmmakers were going to be up against it this time. It was at the end of chapter one, after Pennywise had been defeated and was holding on for dear life. Bill looked at him and confessed he realized they had been able to defeat the clown because they were no longer afraid of him. Well, series over as far as I was concerned, unless some entirely new mechanic was to be introduced to counteract this. Well, it wasn't. And not only wasn't it, but for some reason our ancient interdimensional antagonist, who's had 27 years to do nothing but slumber and devise new tactics, uses all the same tricks on every single kid. Bill sees Georgie again. Eddie sees the leper. These people already conquered these fears as kids. Why are we being treated to this again? Is it supposed to be scarier through the eyes of an adult? Because I promise you, it isn't. And not only that, but they don't even put as much effort into hiding Pennywise and disguising him in clever ways as he navigates the shadows of Derry, like they did in the first one. Here he just kind of is walking around half the time, out in the open. It's weird. It Chapter 2 is far from bad. A movie with performances this good could never be ultimately bad. But the film is as long as an epic, and nothing in it feels substantial. If there was one film you were going to cram repetitious material into, it shouldn't have been the one that is nearly three hours long. For my time, I'm going to need to see quite a bit of originality throughout those three hours. Never mind bits I was tired of before the film even began. If you enjoyed the first, then see this one. You owe it to yourself to finish the story, and it's worth it under those conditions. But if you had any reservations about the first and left it feeling any way other than intrigued by what the sequel would bring, then you could skip this one. Just watch chapter one twice and pretend you saw it. I'll see you next time.